Hi there, in this segment, we're gonna talk about arithmetic and geometric sequences and series. Now, this is a sequence. A sequence is just a list of terms. It can be numbers, letters, there can be a pattern or not. This is called an arithmetic uh, sequence. And it's because it has a common difference of five. An arithmetic uh, sequence has a common difference where you either add or subtract the same number every time. So here we go, up five, up five, up five, up five. And uh, for all these sequences, there's what's called the nth term formula, which basically allows you to stick in the number n and find whatever term it is you want. This is my first term, a sub one, a sub two, a sub three, a sub four. You can see that each of these uh, has a little number below the a that is a subscript and it tells you what term it is that we're dealing with. Um, so uh, my common difference here is five. I'm gonna start out with five n plus c. And c is a number, it's just a constant that helps my first term start off on the right spot. So you can pick any of these you want, plug in the n, the, what it, the a sub n is, and solve for that common difference. I'll just use the second term. Uh, realizing that the second term is 22 and n is two, you just have to ask five times two is 10, 10 plus something equals uh, 22, that's 12. This is called my explicit formula for a sub n. And it's called explicit because what it allows me to do is take any term number that I want, plug in that for n, and it instantly gives me the term that I'm looking for. So for example, if I wanted the 38th term here, instead of counting up 38 times, I could just do five times 38 plus 12 is gonna be uh, that's going to be 190 plus 12 is 202. So that's the 38th term. Um, besides the explicit formula, there's also what's called the recursive formula. What recursive means is that your next term is based on the previous term. And so for us, a sub n is going to be the previous term plus 5. And so if I ask you for the fourth term, the catch is you need to know the third term and then the second and the first. You can't just jump into uh, 38 without doing all the previous terms. A sub one, we know is 17. And A sub two is A sub one plus five, which is 17 plus five, or 22. And then A sub three would be A sub two plus five, which is 22 plus five, 27. And then finally, A sub four is A sub three plus five which is 27 plus five or 32. The recursive formula is easier to set up, it's harder to use. The explicit formula is faster to, to, to use, but it's more difficult to set up. So that is how arithmetic se sequences work. They have a common difference. This is how you set up their nth term formula. Um, a geometric sequence is a different kind because it has a common ratio. A common ratio. Write that down, common ratio. And that means that you multiply each term by a certain value to get the next term. So uh, perhaps I have 7, 21, 63, 189, and we'll just kind of keep going there. The common ratio here is 3, and a sub n is a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. That is the explicit, um, the explicit. Uh, common uh, formula for the a sub, the nth term, sorry. Um, so here a sub 1 is 7, r is 3. We would have a sub n is 7 times 3 to n minus 1. The reason this works, the reason you have an exponent is this is just kind of like 7 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Basically, you start out with a certain number and multiply it times the same number many, many times. And that's why we have 3 to a certain power. Uh, so again, my explicit formula there. Um, if you needed to know the, uh, you know, the the tenth term, uh, that's going to be a really big number. But you would just do seven times three to the ten minus one power, and that would equal your your tenth term or whatever it needed to be. Um, geometric sequences also have a recursive version. Recursive is going to be a sub n is r times the previous. So for example, if your first term is seven, 
uh, my m term is going to be uh, three times a sub n minus one. That's my recursive version. So the second term is going to be um, three times the first term, three times seven, which is 21. And then my third term is three times the second term, three times 21. You can see a 63, and then it keeps going. So again, the recursive version uh, of the nth term is easier to set up, but it takes more work because you have to go through every darn term to get to the one you want. So <clears throat> that's a little bit about geometric sequences and, ser and, and, and arithmetic sequences. I want to just look at series for a minute and then we'll be done. Um, so if you have an arithmetic series, a series is a sequence that's just all added together. Six plus 11 plus 16 plus 21 plus 26 plus 31. You can kind of see where this is going. If you take these terms and you want to add them all up, um, you know, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight terms, it's not that bad. Um, but if you had a lot more than that, it would be challenging. These two terms add up to 47. The third and the third to last add up to 47. And then these add up to 47. What I want you to notice is if you take the first and last terms here, these go up five and then this goes down five. So every pair here is going to equal the same thing. That's why the sum of the first n terms in an arithmetic uh, sequence is just n over two. That's the number of terms. And then times the first plus the last. Uh, we've got eight terms here. So the sum of the first eight terms is eight over two times the first term plus the eighth term. That's going to be uh, 187. Uh, is that right? Four times, yeah, 188, sorry. Um, and so, you know, this is pretty doable, but imagine you wanted to add first thousand numbers together. That's a little more daunting. Um, if you have one plus two plus three plus four and on to a thousand, 999. Notice that one and 1,000 are 1,001, two and 999 are 1,001. And the sum of those first thousand numbers would just be the number of pairs, 500 pairs times the first plus the last for 500 times 1,001 is 500,500. So that's just kind of an easy trick to know when you have an uh, arithmetic sequence that is, that is finite, that ends. If this is infinite, then we're out of luck here. Um, but that's just one way you can add up a, 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 a finite arithmetic series. Uh, finally, I want to talk about a geometric series. And uh, for starters, if you have an, an infinite geometric series that uh, where it's getting bigger all the time, three, um, sorry, plus nine, plus 27, plus 81, plus 243, you can see that this is going to be infinitely big and there's not going to be a sum. So you're kind of out of luck there. But if you have a geometric series that is not getting bigger, that's in fact getting smaller. So you have eight um, plus four plus two plus one plus a half. The R here is uh, one half. We're multiplying by a half every time plus a 16th plus a 32nd and dot, dot, dot. Um, here R is one half. There's kind of a, a, a catch. I'm going to write down the formula for, for, and then we'll talk about it. This applies if R is between negative one and positive one, and the sum of that infinite series is a sub one over one minus R. And just for, just while we're here, we'll just say a sub one is eight. R is a half, is eight over a half, which is 16. Um, and so let me just show you kind of why this works. Uh, I'm going to take these numbers, the whole numbers, and those are going to be like 12, 14, 15. Then I want to think about the fractions. The fractions are getting smaller and smaller, and even though there's an infinite number of terms, eventually they get so darn small that they're like infinitely close to zero. So it kind of makes a little sense that if you have an infinite number of things that are super, super close to zero, maybe the thing converges after all. Imagine this box is like one, and here's a half. So I'm just going to color in a half. And then a fourth goes right here. And then an eighth goes right here. 
And then here's a 16th, that's half of what's left. And this is a 32nd, and this is a 64th. And you can see that I'm gonna forever be coloring in a half of what's remaining. And if you do this an infinite number of times, this box gets infinitely close to being full. And basically what you end up with is one. And so that's why this ends up being 16. So kind of an interesting little visual on how that works. So this uh, is the setup on geometric and arithmetic sequences and series. Uh, there is a formula for a, a finite geometric series that I'm not covering today here. So I hope this helps. Bye-bye.